Rock 100.5 KATT. It's Cameron Buckholtz here with Tom Kiefer. What's going on, man? Oh, you know, just rocking along on the tour trail this summer, having a good time. Indeed. And, uh, yeah, we're going to see you next week uh, at, at Rocklahoma. You, you're headlining the uh, the Thursday night pre-party, and uh, it's going to be a great time. Yeah, we're really looking forward to that before. We've done Rocklahoma several times in the past. We have not yet done the pre-show party, which I hear is quite a good time. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Indeed, yeah. You've actually you've played uh, Rocklahoma, I think, three times before, uh, once with Cinderella and, and twice on your own. Uh, yeah. I know you play a lot of those kind of festivals, but is there anything that kind of sticks out in your mind about Rocklahoma? Always a really wild crowd, you know, definitely. Um, you know, people really, really bring the energy there. And, um, you know, particularly with how hot it is, you know, it's impressive that they give off that much uh, energy. <laughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's always fun. Hopefully it won't be that hot by the time you're playing. I think you go on at like 1030 or something and it's in a tent yeah. too. So like it, it might be uh, not quite so sweaty. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Well, we're used to that. So indeed. And then uh, faster pussycat is also on that bill. Uh, I, I'm sure they're a band that you've, you've played with quite a lot. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We've toured with them a bunch. Good friends love Tammy and the band and they just really bring it killer band so yeah it's a good that's a good pair of bands there between faster and and kefir band as we call it um should be a fun rock and roll night now, how far back do you go with tammy were you were you like hanging out at the cat house and whatnot i didn't go to the cat house a lot but i've known them since way back then um yeah known him for for years good guy <laughs> Nice. And now uh and, and he's always been one of my favorites from the from uh from our era or decade. Um you know, love love their music and songs and his voice is just you know, just so cool. Just so much attitude. So Indeed. Now I was I was thinking back to the last time that you played Rocklahoma and uh it, it worked out great that you played the same day as Hailstorm, so Lizzie was able to jump up and uh do nobody's fool with you. That's right. Yeah, that's the last time we played there. Yeah, that was a lot of fun that day. Um, yeah, Lizzie's her voice is amazing, and I, I love Hailstorm. Such a great band, great songs, and uh, yeah, it's always a uh, always a good time to share the stage with them. We've actually done the Nobody's Fool duet a couple times live, and we actually recorded it. Um, there's a studio recording of it that's a bonus track on the. Um, expanded edition or special edition of the way life goes indeed it's a great version thank you yeah that's cool there's actually two versions i, I kind of prefer the piano ballad version the more broken down version of it is kind of a more unique there's the one that's kind of st we're just straight ahead and then the one that's more kind of vibey so it's an interesting two different takes but yeah but her voice my god amazing and you were kind of, uh, you know, ahead of the curve in terms of, uh, you know, a, a dude from your era working with Lizzie, especially now with all the, the Skid Row shows. Um, I, I guess, yeah. We <laughs> met back in 2013 is when we did our first show together. With, and that was the first year my solo band was out touring and we, we ended up doing a couple of shows together. And that's when we, uh, we had uh, hit upon the idea of, uh, you know, in the encore the first show that we did was to do a song together and we picked that one so nice and how uh just the touring in general been going this summer really great and we've been out uh we've been out most of the year we were down we we're out for a little bit uh, in january down in florida and then we did the west coast in the spring and we started the summer leg in july that we've been on and uh it's been great great crowds great energy uh, we're having a blast, man. I mean, it seems like you've pretty much been consistently out for, you know, since like 2022, right? Um, yeah, this, this is our third year since, yeah, 22 was our first year after the pandemic. We kind of sat out 2021 with all the kind of, I sure. know there were a lot of, you know, kind of strange concerts where people were pulling up cars and <laughs> that kind of, you know, we kind of, we just kind of waited till 22. So it was like kind of the, the, the normal, a little more normal, and we went out that year actually with Faster Pussycat and LA Guns as a, as a package doing 
doing uh, shows with them. And then we were out last year with Winger and John Karabi and some shows with LA Guns. And then this is our third year. But prior to the pandemic, we had toured. Um, we first record was released, uh, The Way Life Goes, in 2013. And that's when this band was formed and started touring. And uh, we toured straight through uh, the 2019 when we released the uh, second solo record, Rise. And we were actually on our second single from that record, uh, the song Hype. We were kind of in the middle of working that one when the pandemic hit. So um, so every, everybody went home then. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. And now, I mean, is, is touring still something that you enjoy? Yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, it's kind of always been my favorite part of of uh, you know the what I do, I guess, um, because it's just spontaneous. You know, um, I love writing songs and making records, but that's you know it's more of a um, and I always call, call it a love hate relationship with those speakers in the studio because you're trying you hear this song in your head. And you know what you want it to sound like, and sometimes the creation process is very easy, and it, and it just pops right out of the speakers, and you go, there it is. And uh, other times it's more, you know, a little bit more of a tug of war. So um, it's a, uh, it's I, I love the process, but it, it's it can be draining, you know, mentally and psychologically, I guess, because it's. You know, when when you hear a song in your head and you want it to come out, you know, that's something that's, um, I I don't know how to describe it. Like I said, sometimes it's very easy and other times you're hearing something that's a little bit harder to kind of make happen. Um, So, but, you know, it's, it's uh, it's a team effort in the studio, you know, between... The, the musicians and the producers and the engineers and you know you're all working towards this common goal and it's uh, you're, you're pulling something out of thin air that didn't exist before sure. so it's it's very you know it's very rewarding once it happens but sometimes it takes a minute to get there and it can be very frustrating <laughs> for, for everybody <laughs> sure. just me I, I think most artists would, would describe it that way so so when you when you get that done and you release it and it's like there it is and now you just get to go play live and you know live is just in the moment and spontaneous and you know you're sharing the music with the people and you're getting that energy back it's you know I, I would say that's my favorite aspect of the of the uh, music biz, I guess, if you want to call it that. <laughs> and now, when you're out on the road, you're you're actually you're you're in a bus and kind of doing it real touring wise, right? You're not doing a bunch of kind of weekend flyouts and such. No, I don't like flying um, because you don't get to sleep. I did that one time years ago. We were in Europe um, and we were flying everywhere, and it's like early morning airport calls at like you know 5 a.m you gotta be in the lobby mm-hmm. you know you lucky if you got back to your room after the show by and in, in bed and trying to sleep by one so it's like four hours sleep so it's real hard on the voice and the body too you know so mm-hmm. um i did it once and i was like no nah, i, I kind of like just that door-to-door service of the bus where you walk off stage and you, you can get in your bunk and sleep for 10, 11 hours. <laughs> right. Let, yeah. your, let your voice and body recover and roll out a bunk and walk up to sound check, you know, which is pretty much what I do. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like the bus. It's. Gotcha. It's, and now with it being, uh, you know, five years since rise kind of, where are you at on, on new music? Well, you know, I think there's a record probably brewing. There, there always is one. Um, there's, uh, you know, music is kind of floating in the air. <laughs> you know, songs are, they're always out there somewhere. You know, it's just when the inspiration strikes you. Um, I like to keep it organic and wait for something really, uh, a strong emotion or a feeling to hit that really feels like a song. Um, and, you know, it's, you kind of collect those, I call them like, you know, like the little seeds of songs. You get these chorus lines in your head. And I just kind of let them brew. And and um, the ones that I remember, you know, I think 
I feel like are maybe the strongest ones or the best ones. And mm-hmm. then eventually those are the ones that get written. So yeah, since Rise, there's been a lot of, a lot of ideas floating in and out and kind of keeping track of them. And, um, you know, I say albums are kind of like a lightning strike, you know, and you, you kind of know when you're ready and when you have one and, and you just boom, it falls out. So, but writing, the writing process is, I know this might sound weird, but it's almost every day, you know, because ideas go in and out of your head all day long. And, and the first question as a writer is, it's like, hmm, is that a song? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and if one really s- sticks with you, you know, it's, you eventually write it. At, at least that's how I work. And are, are you like putting things like little, you know, melodies and stuff in your in your phone? Or how, how do you kind of keep track of all that? Um, usually I don't, I, I didn't for years, every once in a while I will now, if there's something that I think that's really good that I won't remember, but I used to, the, my natural filtration process used to be was to not to record anything. And for decades, that's how I did it because I figure if I forget it, then it's not memorable. And sure. now that I'm getting a little bit older, if something goes through my head that I think is really strong, and I'm afraid that I'm going to forget it. I might, I might sing that into the into the phone. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but I still try to do the the natural filtration process where you see what sticks with you, you know. Because, uh, and I, I think that you know, it's it's always worked for me. I've, I've heard other sing, uh, songwriters say they do it that way too. Mm-hmm. Um, so you see what really sticks with you. Gotcha. If it keeps it makes haunting sense. you and keeps coming back to you, then maybe there's something there. I sure. guess that's the best way to put it. Now, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, the bus maybe is a little easier on your voice. And with, you know, us just seeing Aerosmith retire because of Steven Tyler's vocal issues and John Bon Jovi is probably in a, in a similar situation. Uh, how much work are you kind of putting into to, to maintain your voice? Well, you know, I went through a long, you know, it's a lo- I have a long history of trouble that mm-hmm. was um, initially not, was not easily diagnosed. They, they thought it was all kinds of different things back in the early 90s. And they finally diagnosed me with a partial paralysis, uh, technically called a paresis um, of the left side of my, my left vocal cord. So um, I went, you know, the there's no medical cure for that. Um, although they tried a few things and I had a lot of surgeries that were for collateral damage because it's very difficult to sing with. I was told I'd never sing again, but I kept trying. So I kept injuring my chords because it's like singing on, on an, in, on a weak vocal cord. <clears throat> so most of the surgeries I had were to fix collateral damage, but ultimately the way it got fixed was by learning uh, proper technique, and I went through a lot of different coaches till I found one that really taught me uh, what what was going to help me, which was to learn, you know, like 300-year-old bel canto Europe, European opera training. Hmm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that really, that helped. And, uh, you know, I do that, I do it every day. You know, I do, and I do it before sound check i do it before the show i do a little bit after the show i do it at home to maintain um and it's it works for me um it's a it's a very kind of exact very exact precise um technique and the teacher who taught me his name was ron anderson he, he passed away a couple of years ago he was one of the few people left i think um really understood how to teach this technique so i was fortunate to to get to work with him and it it saved my voice Hmm. well great uh one last thing and then i'll I'll let you go and uh hopefully it's not something that you're you're tired of talking about if it is i apologize but uh i i I love the pat's chili dog commercial i think it's it's just so fun (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's something that keeps popping up here and there yeah it was just you know it was we were just, you know, kids, you know, the band wasn't signed yet and we we're playing locally in the area and there was a, the, you know, Pat's Chili Dogs wanted to advertise lo- on local cable and they were going to, they were going to do it on MTV, but it was not nationally, obviously it was local. So they, the owner saw us and asked if, if I would write a jingle for him and shoot a little video. So that's what we did. And, 
who would have thought years later that that's still like floating around and um it's yeah it's funny yeah i mean i I think you should add it to the set list man (laughs) who knows Awesome. Well, Tom, I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we'll we'll just see you next week at, at Rock, Oklahoma. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it, man. We're gonna pull in and do our thing, and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody and having having a good time. Indeed. Well, thank you, man. See you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.